Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. And today, I'm, uh, I'm talking to you as AD0DQ, a uh, ham radio operator, because I have an interesting ham radio case to talk about. I'll have more on that in just a moment. People who have managed to get an amateur radio license know a couple of things. First, the profession or the hobby is morally, more or less unregulated directly by the FCC during normal operations. In other words, if you get into a tiff with somebody on the radio and you say bad words and do bad things, uh, for the most part, the FCC is not going to come drive out to your house, kick in the front door, and take your radio. Um, but there are ways to come to the attention of the FCC, and one of those is buying radios that transmit out of band, and two, using those radios to transmit out of band, and three, doing that in a way that causes problems for an emergency responder. So today we are going to talk about Jason Frawley. Jason Frawley is not only a ham radio operator, but he also has allocations in the microwave pool, and he has, uh, operate, or he has uh, licenses, I believe, in the uh, family radio service. So he is a multiple licensee by the FCC. He's fairly easy to spot and fairly easy to find. And if you're the FCC, you can probably find him pretty easily. And that's exactly what happened here. In July of 2021, there was a fire called the Johnston Fire in Idaho. And the Idaho Bureau of Land Management and the uh, U.S. Forest Service got together and was fighting that fire. They were both fighting the fire with helicopters and with fire crews and with aircraft and that sort of thing. This is what you would expect the Forest Service to do. So we all know as amateur radio operators that in an emergency you can transmit out of band if you need to. Uh, but an emergency is defined fairly narrowly as peril to life. So if the Mona Lisa is sitting at the top of a uh, fire lookout and that fire lookout is about to get burned up, well, that's definitely an emergency for art lovers, but it's not an emergency for the FCC. However, if 10 school children are up on top of that uh, fire lookout and it's about to get burned, then it's an emergency because lives are in peril. It is very, very important to understand that the authorization to transmit out of band is a very narrow exception. And there is absolutely no need to transmit out of band if other communications methods are available. So if you can pick up your cell phone and call the Forest Service and pass that message along, or you can call 911 and pass that message along. You do not need to transmit out of band on frequencies that you're not authorized because by doing so, you are probably going to be considered to be causing harmful interference, even if there is a legitimate emergency. Now, you may not wind up getting fined for it. People may understand that in a legitimate emergency, you reached for the first tool that you had. But generally speaking, there are other ways to handle it, and if there are other ways to handle it, you should absolutely resort to them. Now, Mr. Frawley is facing a $34,000 fine for transmitting twice out of band. He transmitted five times in July, July 17th, and three times on another, on another day to the Forest Service on Forest Circus... <laughs> on Forest Service frequencies between 148 and 178 megahertz. 
And as a result of that, the people that listened to him asked him who he was and why he what he was transmitting for. He identified himself as a com tech. Now, here's where we get into the second mistake that Frawley made. At the point in time where he is transmitting and they ask him to identify, if he has a legitimate emergency, he would quite naturally identify with his amateur radio call sign or one of the other amateur radio call signs. But he did not. He identified as a com tech. So the fire supervisor went to the place where he had indicated that he was and interviewed him and told him in no uncertain terms to stop transmitting. But then he did it again the next day. So they sent an FCC agent out to go talk to him. Now I want you to understand FCC agents are just like NCIS agents. Uh, just like any other federal agent, HHS, any of the agencies that have enforcement powers also have agents with police and arrest powers. And he went to this man's home wearing a body camera and interviewed him. And this is where he made his third mistake. His third mistake was he talked to the agent without an attorney present. He had no obligation to talk to the agent. The agent was there conducting an interview, conducting an investigation, and he had every right, if he suspected that they were talking about a criminal act, he had every right to refuse to answer. Now, the FCC has other techniques they can use to get him to answer, but he was being video recorded and everything he said can and was used against him by the FCC. The fourth mistake that he made after admitting to what he did with the uh, FCC agent where he said, no, it wasn't me the second time. I don't know who that was, but it wasn't me. I did it the first time, but I didn't do it the second time. Um, this is his fourth and final mistake was admitting in a letter that he sent to the FCC special counsel that yes, he had transmitted out of band the first time, but he didn't know who did that the second time. It must have been somebody else. The fact of the matter is he didn't identify, he admitted to transmitting out of band, and he did not declare an emergency to life. These are the kind of things that will result in a forfeiture. The FCC had to act here because the Forest Service asked them to. Anybody who has ever worked in public service, and I worked on an ambulance for a short time, you can't have people talking to you on the ambulance frequency telling you things you don't need to know. You're there to do one job. In this case, the firefighters were there to do one job. Drop stuff on this fire to put it out. They did not need conflicting information being passed to them by someone with no organizational basis to pass information along. He wasn't a part of the Forest Service, and he wasn't authorized to transmit on those frequencies. And the only way he could have been transmitting on those frequencies is if he had a radio, if he possessed a radio that transmitted out of band. Now, either it transmitted out of band because it was one of the older Baofengs, or it transmitted out of band because it had been modified to transmit out of band. Either way, he knew better, he should have done better, and he didn't do better. As a result of this, the gentleman's probably going to get hit with this $34,000 fine and probably be required to pay it. Now, he has an opportunity to hire a lawyer now and go contest this fine. But having admitted to the requisite acts here, it is unlikely, in the extreme, that he will be able to escape some form of penalty for what happened here. This is an area of administrative law. Enforcement actions in the FCC are handled substantially differently than they are in other areas. Even if he is found liable for this uh, apparent liability, the fact is he has an opportunity to take that up to the district court. But getting a lawyer involved after you've already made admissions is not the way to go. So here is my suggestion to anybody who gets a notice from the FCC 
or a visit from an FCC agent. Call a lawyer. Get a lawyer involved sooner rather than later. And if you do, I guarantee you, the outcome will be better in the end than if you just try to wing it. That's what we're here for. We're here to help people who step out of line. And even if your intentions are good, in some cases, your intentions are not going to matter to the FCC. That's what happened here. If you have any questions, uh, I will post a link to the enforcement action online uh, with the description of this uh, video, and you can read the enforcement action there. Thank you very much for paying attention and giving me an opportunity to talk about this. If you have any questions, leave them in the questions or in the comments down below. Otherwise, Otherwise go over here and subscribe to our channel. Uh, tap the notification bell so you be notified anytime I release a video on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a terrific day.